So I have here some of the common circuit components that you're going to be looking at at GCSE. And actually, sometimes it's a little bit uh, difficult to identify what is what. And also, when you're building real circuits, there's often wires everywhere. There's all these uh, meters that you're using to, to find out what's going on in the circuit. And it all gets a bit complicated. So what we do is we draw circuit diagrams and we use very simple symbols to actually represent all of these. So what I'd like to do is just talk through some of these components, give a brief introduction to what they actually do, and then we're going to look at the circuit symbols, and this is something that you need to remember. Now, this is a battery, pretty common, the kind of thing you'll have seen all the time in everyday life. But inside the battery, we have a series of cells. Now, each cell, when you join them together, all of these added up make a battery. Now, often, when it comes to physics, uh, what we talk about is a cell, rather than a battery. And this is maybe a little bit different to the everyday language. So for example, you might have one of these holders here, and inside this we've got a source of uh, energy. And uh, basically this is acting as one cell. You add cells together to make a battery. And this is a symbol for a single cell. And then this is a symbol for a battery. The next thing we have is our wire. This is just represented often with a straight line. Now you should use a ruler if you've got time when it comes to drawing your circuit diagrams to make sure that everything is neat. But if you're sketching something in an exam, then you can just do that line freehand as long as you try and keep it straight. Um, this one here, actually the, the width of the end is four millimeters. So these are often called four millimeter leads. So we've got our wires. The next thing that we have is this kind of light bulb here. So this is called a filament lamp, and it's because there's a very thin metal filament inside it, and when a current flows through that, this gets hot, and after it gets hot, it then starts to emit light. And this is just represented with a circle with a cross through the middle. So this is our conventional old-style light bulb. So these are things you'll have probably seen before, uh, maybe before you even got to GCSE. Something else that we have um, is this component here. Now this acts as a resistor, and this one here is a fixed resistor, which means it always has the same resistance that we measure in ohms. And then the bands, the coloured bands here, the order that they go in, that tells you about the size of that resistance. And we just represent this one as this rectangle, um, and that's pretty much our standard resistor. So the idea is that that always has the same resistor, and we use these in circuits so we can actually control the current flowing in different parts. But sometimes we have resistors where we can manually control that resistance. And we give this this symbol over here. So it's the same as a resistor, but this has now got a line through it showing that we can change that resistance. So that's a variable resistor. Another kind of resistor we have is this one here. Now this one here, it changes its resistance as the amount of light falling on it changes. And what we have on the top here is a kind of um, a sensor. And effectively, the more light that lands on this, the lower the resistance. And because the resistance depends on the light, we call this a light-dependent resistor, or LDR. And it has this uh, symbol here where we've got these arrows that come in showing that there's light landing onto this. And I've got another video that explains a little bit more about that. So that's our light-dependent resistor. We also have a resistor that changes its resistance with temperature. So this is a thermal resistor, also known as a thermistor. And again, this one here has a symbol where um, there's this rectangle, but there's this kind of line that goes through it, a bit like a, the shape of like a kind of um, like an ice hockey stick. So this one here is our thermistor. So that's our resistor that changes with temperature, and that's really useful. Another symbol that we sometimes see that actually looks a bit like a resistor is this one here. Now you can see that this is a rectangle, but there's a line going through the middle. And this one actually represents a fuse. So the fuse is designed to stop uh, something overheating. And the line in the middle of this uh, symbol represents the wire in the middle of a fuse. When the wire gets too hot, it just melts, it breaks the circuit, and it stops the current flowing. So this is a symbol for a fuse. Now the next component here, it actually looks like a very small resistor, but this is actually a diode. Often when you get things in the science lab, they'll be mounted here so you can just plug the leads in and that means you're not kind of dealing with the necessary, the real components. So this is a symbol for a diode. And a diode allows current to flow in one direction, but it stops it in the other direction. So for that reason, uh, the actual symbol looks a bit like an arrow going one way, and then there's this kind of stop going in the other direction. Sometimes we have a circle around it, uh, sometimes there isn't. Again, you might see in different textbooks very similar things to represent the same component. So this one here is a diode. And probably 
a more common thing that you might have heard of is an LED. So an LED is just a light emitting diode. And again, this only allows current to flow in one direction. Uh, and one way, um, if we are actually connect it to one of these button cells I've got over here, is that if you notice I connect it one direction, nothing happens, it doesn't light up. But if I turn it round and connect it in the other direction, light is then being emitted. So a light emitting diode, it has a, a similar symbol to the normal diode, but this time we've got a couple of arrows coming out of it to show that light is being emitted. And finally, we've got a couple of devices that we use for measuring what's actually going on inside the circuit. The one with the big V on it is a voltmeter, which measures in volts the potential difference. And the one with the big A on it is an ammeter that's measuring the amps, which is the current that's flowing in that circuit. And again, these have either a symbol of a V or an A in a circle to show that that's a meter. And you've got to remember that when it actually comes to putting these into a real circuit, we always put the ammeter in series with the component and we put the voltmeter across the component that we're going to be measuring the potential difference across. So these are the common things that we use in circuits at GCSE and you've just got to be able to remember all of these circuit symbols. Sometimes you might get an exam question where you're asked to draw maybe the symbol for a resistor. Sometimes it's just as simple as showing where you put the ammeter and voltmeter in a circuit. So what I recommend you do is you find a table that has all of these and then you just spend a little bit of time just trying to learn them off by heart. Because the sooner you learn them, the sooner you can actually start to actually understand what's happening in the circuit diagrams that you might see in any questions that you're given.